What's up guys, ViperFV here, and today we are talking about Betaflight 4.2. That is right, Betaflight 4.2 actually just came out as a release candidate. So if you uh, like updating to the newest versions of Betaflight and testing out some new software before the official release, this is your time to go ahead and download Betaflight 4.2 and try it out for yourself. Um, so we're going to pretty much talk about the new features of Betaflight 4.2 in this video. We'll just go over the patch notes. Um, and then talk a little bit more about Betaflight 4.2 as well. Um, if you're interested in initial setup videos for Betaflight 4.2, I will be doing those on the channel. Uh, so uh, subscribe, like, um, all that stuff if you found this video helpful. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, dive right in to Betaflight 4.2 updates. So real quick before we jump into the changes of Betaflight uh, 4.2, we are just going to show you guys if you want to try it out real quick how to flash it. Um, so the first thing you want to go ahead and do is we need to get the new Betaflight Configurator 10.7. Uh, we're in the release candidate one on this. So you just want to come over to this page. I'll leave a link to this down below as well. And let's click on here. And it should bring you down here where we can go ahead and we can get to the necessary configurator you want to install on your computer. Um, so once you have that installed on your computer, what you want to go ahead and do is you want to come over to uh, Betaflight. Um, have it open up and let's go ahead and disconnect real quick. Um, so you're going to be pretty much at this screen here. Um, most flight controllers should do that this way, um, but you can go ahead and connect, go to CLI, and then we're going to go ahead and type in BL for bootloader. And that's going to go ahead and put the flight controller in DFU mode. You'll see it right here in the top right. Then you want to come over here to the left and come here to firmware flasher. And you want to make sure that you have show unstable releases here. And then you want to go ahead and come up to release and release candidates. And then just flight the, uh, find the flight controller of your choice um, and go ahead and click on load firmware and then go ahead and hit flash. If you're unsure what flight controller you have in your quadcopter, um, real easy way to get that. Let me just go ahead and disconnect this real quick. Is what you want to go ahead and do is come over to hit connect on your flight controller. Go to CLI and then type in version. And then that'll tell you right here uh, which one you have. All right, so we're here on the GitHub of Betaflight and we see right here Betaflight 4.2.0 release candidate one. And just keep in mind, this might be on five since this is always updating. It might even be officially released. So we're just going over the patch notes of Betaflight 4.2 and just telling you guys what's new. Um, so right here we have completely reworked the gyro loop, improved performance, and made it always run at the native speed of the gyro. Now, before we were pretty much uh, using every other frame or reducing it, um, how much data it was pulling from the gyro. Now what we pretty much are doing is now making sure it's always running at its native rate and then letting the PID loop decide of when it's going to pull the data. That's how I'm pretty much describing it. Um, so then we also have added new selectable actual and quick rate models. And this is um, an actual difference to the rate. So how we have our rate set up. Um, this actually allows you to directly set your rates um, for your center stick and then also for your maximum rate and then any like expo or anything else. You can directly and independently from each other like raw, yaw, roll and pitch uh, control the stick ends um, and also the, the expo. So going on to the next thing we have here, we have the added compensation for sagging battery voltage resulting in more consistent throttle. So this is actually, um, you know, when you're having a four, especially a 4S, this would probably be the biggest help on 4S because um, 6S, you don't really have any battery sag, but on 4S you do if you're doing a lot of punch outs. Um, and even at the end of your pack, you'll notice a reduce in uh, performance. But what this is pretty much going to be doing is adding compensation for your um, battery. So as you get lower, you should not feel that as much when you're doing punch outs. I'm assuming that it probably reduces the front end a little bit. So then when it gets to the end, it kind of has more to play with. That's my assumption, um, but I could be wrong. Um, but then we also had an added level race mode. So it's a different way of um, how having the angle of the FPV camera and also uh, in angle mode. Uh, a lot of whoops and everything else raced in that scenario. 
Um, and then some other minor features we had added the option to display a OSD logo on arming. I'm assuming that's kind of like the uh, Brain FPV logo, but with characters instead of actual um, like animated images that you can do in the graphical display of the uh, Radix flight controllers from Brain FPV. Um, we also added support for enhanced OSD CMS devices, made it possible to support highlighting of text or symbols. So they've added like highlighting text or symbols if you wanted to have a little more bolder. Um, maybe you put that behind your, your voltage of your battery. So then you, you can kind of see it and be able to, you know, be more, more in your view, possibly, I don't know, maybe a good use for that. Um, added support for free sky OSD, OSD devices. That's actually a new, uh, free sky OSD that they came out. I think that's mostly used on uh, fixed wings and planes. Um, and then they also added support for the red pine RC protocol on devices with an SPI connected, uh, chip. So that's just adding support for a feature. So that's pretty much it in Betaflight 4.2. There's not a ton of things that have changed, um, but they did add some, looks like some neat little features we can be playing around with. Um, I will be doing a Betaflight 4.2 initial setup video, maybe even do a beginner's guide as well, do a little separate video on that as well um, to help you guys out just starting into Betaflight. Um, so if you found this video helpful or if uh, you want to learn more about Betaflight or learn more about FPV and just going out and flying, uh, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.